Hey, what's up, guys? I got a video here. I just I just had to do um, in response to Brad's video uh, called Top Ten Fragcom Pet Peeves, and it was a great video by Brad. Um, it was a great idea. He had some really nice ones that that got me thinking and and uh, really made me want to sit down and do a response to it. So I'm gonna read you his ten and um, give you some quick thoughts on it. Number 10, he put Aventus Killers. All the Aventus clones that have come out, uh, including Fresco, Insurrection Pure, Lomani AB Silver, and uh, Glenn Perry Unf Unforgettable Adventure, something like that. Um, those are just a few of the ones that are out there. For this, yeah, I mean, I get, I get why it's annoying. Because to me, when I see another one, at first, I kind of like have that first knee-jerk reaction of not another one. But then you check the price. It, it, it's annoying when they're sold out and they're hard to find, right? But then you check the price and then you think, hey, it's cheap. And you pull the trigger. Um, it, it's annoying if you're disappointed, definitely, because you probably have heard a lot of hype over a fragrance. Uh, but if you're impressed, you know, like I was with Pure, fortunately, I got to try that one before I bought it. Um, that's a lot of fun to me. I really uh, enjoy those because I do think Aventus is, is a little overpriced. And uh, when you compare the the value, the bang for your buck of Pure to Aventus, I mean, I'm sorry, Aventus, but but I'd I'd go for Pure every day, hands down, because there's such a huge difference in price. Number nine, he put discontinued frag hype. I completely agree with this one. I love his number nine. I mean. My top 10 list, I've kind of made a, a rule of thumb to never include a fragrance that's discontinued. Because why, why are you going to waste a spot on your list for a fragrance that nobody can find that's really expensive? I'll give you one example. Sean John's Unforgivable Multi-Platinum. I know I haven't seen this fragrance on any list, to be fair. But I'm just going to give you an example of one experience I've had with a uh, discontinued frag. When I got that one, I found it on eBay, decided to pull the trigger, it was over like 100 bucks, but since I had heard great things about it, I wanted to try it. I get the fragrance and it's expired. You know, the fragrance smelled like urine. It had gone bad because it was so old. And you got to be careful with these discontinued things. You know, a lot of times they're expired, they're overpriced, they come back, they reissue them like they did with the uh, the the pure malt and pure Avon lines so that is something that you have to watch out for I would recommend to other reviewers to make it an honorable mention you know uh, avoid those discontinued things because people are gonna go and have to blind buy it they can't sample it off your recommendation and you know you could lose a lot of money especially if nobody wants that bottle and you can't sell it to anybody so I would advise people you know to put those in on honorable mentions and that's what I like to do in my my list um, number eight, he put disrespect or ignoring designers, frags, and, and, and designer frags, and he says like because they people get in the community and usually designers their first area and then they go into niche, and I've seen this quite a bit. It's one of the reasons that I started reviewing is because I saw so much hate for for uh, designer fragrances that I really enjoyed that I really loved. And I just kept seeing too many niche videos and too many niche reviews and niche filling up the top 10 list. There are people who just don't have two, three thousand dollars to cough up on a couple bottles of niche in fragrances. And uh, the response I've gotten from that is, well, go decant. But sometimes you don't want to be looking at a decant. You know, you want the bottle and you want to see a bottle and you want to have a collection of bottles and or you want a lot of juice. Sometimes those niche decants, a little tiny decant, cost the same thing as a full designer bottle. So that's one one problem with niche. And uh, I totally agree. I think designers aren't given their fair share in a lot of in a lot of channels. Uh, people ignore them. And my channel, I've been criticized for being overly designer and not enough niche. I've been criticized for for um, liking less expensive fragrances. But, um, I mean, for, for a person like me who doesn't want to spend, you know, the value of a brand new car on a fragrance collection, um, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm gearing toward. That's my target 
audience. You know, I'm not going for the very wealthy people who uh, want to have 300, 400, 500 dollar bottles in their collection. You know, but if that's what you like, um, there's plenty of reviewers out there for that. And at the same time, you may find some designers in my channel that you enjoy. So that's what I like to do. But I would say to some people, um, you know, give niche a little more respect. Give price. Give price more respect because when you have a fragrance like Aventus and Insurrection Pure, and they're that close, Aventus is obviously better, but they're this close, and this one costs you uh, 200 bucks, and this one costs you 25 bucks. You have to take that into consideration because I mean, no, we're not that rich. There's not that many rich people out there, so um, that's just my issue with it. Um, and I agree with Brad. Number seven. Uh, he put polarizing frags not accurately portrayed. For example, Muskrat Vajor of the Angel line. Uh, there's a lot of fragrances that are not as good as people say, but one reviewer will hype it up quite a bit, and the next guy who doesn't want to offend that reviewer, so he won't say that you know maybe it's not so good, or maybe it doesn't get that many compliments, or maybe it's not quite as safe of a fragrance as it's portrayed to be. I totally agree with that one. I completely agree. I've had that experience when I first got into the community of buying fragrances that um, they were just really not wearable at all. And uh, one example is Encore Noir. That fragrance was hyped up a lot by Mark. And I went on and bought it. Oh, no, actually, no, I'm sorry. I got a sample of it. But there was a lot of people who had gone on and bought it. And if you go on the fragrance swap groups, you'll see Encore Noir everywhere. Everybody's got it up for sale for swap. Because, um, you know, we're thinking a niche quality fragrance for 30 bucks, but it's not wearable at all. You know, that's, uh, unfortunately, that happens quite a bit. Um, not just Mark. I mean, everybody has, has hyped up a fragrance here or there that maybe is not as, as crowd-pleasing as they say. And I'm sure I've done it too, once or twice. But, um, I, I'm not, I'm not aware of it. You guys should let me know if I do that. Um. At number five and number six, he put batch code and reformulations uh, such as Aventus and Dioro Intense. I honestly have no problem with this. This is the this is the capitalist system. This is the free market. Um, if people want to pay extra to get a different batch code formulation, you know that's the same reason why people go from from designer to niche because they just want it to be a little bit better. You know they're willing to pay a few hundred bucks extra for a better quality fragrance or different notes and and uh, I actually don't have any complaints with this I like it when I was shopping for Aventus I was looking everywhere for info on batch codes you know what does this batch smell like I don't want to spend that kind of money and get a bad batch so I have I have no problem with that honestly number four he put long videos I hope this video doesn't go too long for you Brad but uh, yeah I mean when when the video the content of the video isn't um, if, if it isn't condensed you know and most of the video is a lot of filler content yeah that does become a problem there's not a lot of people who do that uh, to be honest uh, I don't I don't really have a complaint with that but at the same time uh, the people I subscribe to are people that I enjoy their content so I really don't mind watching their videos number three lack of reviewers with mainstream taste this was my favorite because uh, that's what my channel is my channel is the mainstream taste, the mainstream guy. It's not the guy who's looking for the really uh, crazy, out of um, left field type fragrances. I'm looking for fragrances that are going to smell good to everybody. Fragrances that are going to make you feel confident in what you're wearing. That fragrances are going get to get you compliments from women. Fragrances that are going to you know, be pleasing to everybody and hopefully not offensive. That's what my channel is about. That's what I, that's what fragrance is to me. You know, I know there are other people who who um, have different views of fragrance, but to me that's what fragrance is about. It's about smelling pleasant and feeling good. And it's just like wearing clothes, you know, you're not going to wear hobo clothes that offend people, you know, and that look bad and not appropriate. You want to wear something that's appropriate, that's pleasing and that presents you in a way that you want to be perceived. So I, I totally agree with that. Um, and I hope that my channel fills that void. Number two, he put thumbs down on videos. I really don't have much to say on that. Um, there are a couple people who who have been upset with my channel because I don't have enough niche for their taste. 
And uh, I know some of them come and they thumbs down my videos if there's not enough niche. But, um, you know, <laughs> so be it. It really doesn't mean anything, guys. Uh, number one, one hit wonder channels. Um, I actually don't have a problem with this because I don't subscribe to a channel unless I like the guy's content. Unless I like the top tens he's releasing and the videos he's releasing. And usually those guys have quite a few videos uh, going on that I can look back on. Um, one guy that I miss is uh, Kirill, he's gone. You got Hero, he's gone. Tim, he's gone. There's a few guys that are gone that I really enjoyed. But, um, eh, you know, what can you do? It's not a, it's not something to for me to get upset about. Uh, I'm not paying to subscribe. You know, subscribing is free. So I wanted to add uh, a, couple, a couple onto his list, some problems that I have. Here's one. Us and ums. And I'm sure I do this. I've seen it in my videos and it bothers me when I do this. I'm, and I try to edit them out when I can. This video is probably not going to be edited. I'm going to try to just get this out there in response to Brad. But there are some times, and I've had to redo a whole video because I do this a lot, where you go like, uh, <laughs> my voice cracked. You go, uh, um, uh, because you, you're, you're not well, um, well versed in what you want to say and you're not really sure what you want to uh, come what, you know, what, what message you want to come across in your video so that I would I would advise people to if you're having problems with the us and the ums put a little bit of thought into what you're gonna say before you shoot the video uh, and unless you like to do everything spontaneous go and edit it um, that's my only suggestion I do this a lot I'm working on it I'm consciously making an effort to stop doing the us and ums so uh, bear with me, guy, guys. And the other one I would say is opinion haters. Opinion haters, guys. What I mean by that is this happens mostly on Facebook where people will, if you disagree with them on a fragrance, they will attack you personally. I see this happen a lot. It happens mostly in FGN, you know, and um, I'm actually not in FGN anymore. I left the group for this reason. Because there are so many people there that if you say something that is not in agreement with the majority view or not in agreement with Mark's view or with their view, uh, they will attack you personally. They'll call you stupid. They'll call you crazy. They'll make fun of you. They'll do all kinds of things to you and make you feel very unwelcomed. And um, I remember this happened to a few people in that group and I actually stood up for the person that they were attacking. And... Uh, and that was one complaint that I had with, with that group that there weren't enough administrators. Mark was hardly ever on there to see what was going on. And it was it's like cyberbullying. You know, one guy got tag teamed by a bunch of people. And there's no need for that, guys. Fragrance is all about opinion. It's only acceptable to question an opinion if it, they're making it as a statement of fact. Saying like, you know, this fragrance is terrible. You say, well, why is it terrible? You know, it might be terrible to you, but it is to me. That's the only way you can question uh, when somebody says. But if they say, I don't like the fragrance, how can you talk, attack them for that? that? That's true. They're entitled to that opinion. They're not entitled to say, you know, it's terrible for everybody. But they say, if it's terrible for me, you know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. We're all entitled to our opinions. And I would say to have a little bit more respect for other people's point of view, you know, we're not, we're, 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 we're not um, intolerant, you know, it's a, it's a friendly community, it should be anyway, and I know that it, this is not a problem in any other group, I've never seen it in another group other than FGN, so uh, that's just one, one pet peeve I had with that group, and I left the group, to be honest, so the next one would be uh, compliment snobbery, compliment snobbery, what I mean by that is when you say, uh, I see this, as like maybe 80 to 90% of the fragrance community says this. And it could be true. I, this could be accurate. They could be telling the truth. But I, I feel like they're not. I feel like they're they're hiding something. But they say, um, I wear a fragrance for me. And I don't care what other people say. I don't care if they don't like it and if I don't get compliments. Because I wear a fragrance for me. And I hear that and I'm just like scratching my head like... Ah, it's like if you have a girlfriend and your girlfriend wears this nasty old lady type perfume 
And you're like, what are you wearing? You know, that smells terrible. You know, can't you smell this? Can't you wear this one? I really love it when you wear this one because you smell amazing. And what if your girlfriend says, I wear perfume for me. I don't wear it for compliments and for what you think. You know, it's only common courtesy to the other person to wear a fragrance that's pleasing to most people and pleasing to the average nose. And that's my, my problem with that. And, and uh, I wear fragrances that, of course, it has to be a fragrance that I like. But if you think of it like, like a, a, a diagram, the two circles, right? You got the fragrances that you like, this broad spectrum, and then you got the fragrances that are pleasant to most people. And where it overlaps, that is where I choose to, to um, purchase, and that is where I choose to devote my attention towards with my collection. It's fragrances that not only I enjoy, but fragrances that other people enjoy as well. And I have a few in there that are only for me, you know, fragrances that, I, that are for me, but I don't wear them around people who don't like them. You know, I wear them when I'm going to be around the house or when I'm going to be at work or when I'm not worried about other people around me. You know, but I just say, you know, you shouldn't um, discard the fact that other people's opinions matter, um, including on yourself. So that's one, one complaint. Another one would be reviewers who never mention the opinions of others in their reviews. This is a, some, Cody's very good at this. Cody does this thing where he goes to Times Square and he gets 100 people to uh, give him their opinion on a, on a fragrance. And I love that about his reviews. Uh, Cody's actually my favorite reviewer for that reason, mostly. And um, But I see in a lot of reviews, the guy will say, you know, this is my fragrance, and I think this, I think X and X and X and X, and that's it, right? And I'm thinking, you know, you spent 10 minutes watching this guy's review of fragrance. Now, once did he mention what his wife thinks about the fragrance? Now, once did he mention what his girlfriend, his sister, his mother... Uh, people around him, what has been his response, you know, I, I'm just thinking, I'm not wearing the fragrance to please a reviewer, you know, and I'm wearing the fragrance to please myself and people around me, so you want a better picture of what other people think, uh, you know, I want to hear what this reviewer, what kind of response he gets in his social circle, especially the females, because females are a little bit of a different uh, taste and fragrance than men do and you know I think that a lot of people forget to include that in their reviews and um, I think it, it makes a review that much better when you have multiple opinions in the same video so that's one one complaint I have um, eBay hate eBay hate I've seen this before mostly from the top end of the reviewers the the guys who have been ruining a long time the, the guys with a lot of money and a lot of collection and those people a lot of them review purchasing fragrances as you got to get it from a really nice store a really nice website and pay extra i disagree um i bought so many fragrances from ebay i bought so many fragrances from amazon and from discounters and yes i have gotten fakes before but the best website for um buyer protection is ebay they give you your money back like that no hassles. The the seller may give you a hassle, but you just raise that complaint to eBay, boom, you get your money back. Many times, you don't even have to give them back the bottle. Many times, you get to keep the fake. And I've never, ever been burned in eBay. I've never been given a hassle. Their, their customer service is so good. I think eBay gets a bad rap. One, of, one tip I would give you is don't buy from auctions. Auctions, unless you see that the guy has really good reviews and you want to take a risk because it's, you know, but I would advise not to because most of the fakes I've gotten are from auctions. I've gotten like, I've seen one fake on Blue de Chanel fakes on Buy It Now, but it's rare. They're usually all in auctions. And uh, top rated sellers, they have a little ribbon next to their name. Those guys are legit. I've never ever bought a fragrance from a top rated seller and got a fake. So, and they're, they get, they have that little ribbon because their customer service is so good. So you can trust those guys. eBay hate. The last one I want to say is heavy frags and summer lifts. I see people with frags like, um, like La Nuit de Lome in their summer list. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> How can you wear La Nuit de Lome in the summer? That thing gives me a headache. It's like, I, I don't know how people can 
can recommend that kind of fragrance in, in summer heat. Um, I mean, gosh, I can barely wear anything fresh like Dolce & Gabbana, the one, in springtime because it's so hot, it becomes a little bit unbearable. So, and then I also see it in reviews when they say what seasons it's good for, and they'll say, oh, this is good all year round. I'm thinking, that fragrance is not good in the summer. I could not wear that fragrance in the summer. Maybe it's me, and my heat is so bad. I'm in Texas, it's like 100 degrees out here. Maybe that's the problem, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think that 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 there there are a lot of people who who re recommend fragrances in the summer that, um, in my opinion, this is just me. I could be wrong. Are not at all wearable in the summer. So those are the ones that I wanted to to mention and to add to to Brad's list. But in in general, this fragrance community it's it's been a, a pleasure to be a part of. It's been awesome. There's so many things to love about the fragrance community. It's hard to go down the list, you know. Most of the things that are great about this community go unnoticed. Things like the integrity and the honesty in the transactions. When you have a split or when you swap a bottle or when you sell a bottle. The the kind of trust that you put in the person you're buying it from. Me personally, when I buy fragrances, I give them as a gift. I don't do the 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 seller and pay the fee for the protection of eBay. I trust the people that I'm buying from. And a lot of times I've never bought from them before. And I haven't been burned yet, and I don't think I ever will be burned because the integrity of the community is so good. Um, um, and I believe a lot of that is due to the, the top, the reviewers. They set the example. People like my makers, people like the Fragrance Brothers, people like Cody, um, those people who, Steve, Red Lessons, who hold themselves to a standard of, of excellence that they've kind of motivated us. You know, they're like leaders. They, they've made us want to be at that level. To be a part of this fragrance community so that's my video in response to brad i would love to hear what you guys think any pet peeves you have if you agree or disagree with anything i've said here let me know in the comments below um take it easy guys peace